Hi, I'm Giovanni Beckis. Um, I'm an OpenBSD developer and uh, mail server administrator for my own company. And uh, this is a 10 year story about how we uh, move our setup from uh, uh, bare metal servers running in Postfix to uh, VM in uh, high availability running uh, both Postfix and uh, Open SMTPD with shared uh, data. The historical setup was uh, on MySP uh, some OpenBSD mail servers and uh, they're running uh, the classical Postfix, uh, SpamAssy, in Anovis, uh, and Kururimap. And uh, then during the years we we found that uh, something should be changed uh, to improve. Uh, one of the things was uh, definitely Postfix, because uh, um, complex setups are being too complex for many reasons, due also because of uh, Amavis that acts like a proxy as its own configuration and so on, and we wanted something simpler. Uh, some of the things we didn't change yet is Kuru Remap. Uh, we decided not to go to Dovecot for... Uh, in the past, it was uh, mainly because we do not need uh, some of the cool features Dovecot has. Uh, now, it's, it's probably something we, we have to do, but uh, I know there's script that should um, change uh, convert all mail deers to Dovecot format, but uh, at the moment we have something like half terabytes of emails, so we have, there is, we need a very strict reason to switch to something else before uh, mm, trying to run a script uh, on s such mail. There was initially, there was no, absolutely no load balances, no shared storage, uh, just bare metal, it was well, more than 10 years ago. Uh, some fixed pieces uh, uh, we want to uh, not to move uh, is OpenBSD because uh, we think it's rock stable and um, being one of the developers uh, is something that uh, I'm very uh, familiar with. Uh, one other thing is uh, I'm not going to move from it's Apache Spam Assassin because uh, I want one of developer there as well, so uh, I had, do not have any reason to move to Respondi or something, uh, some other software. Uh, the first step towards moving to OpenSMTPD was done when uh, uh, OpenSMTPD is being committed to OpenBSD Source 3, uh, mainly because we want to uh, differentiate because, uh, from the main uh, customers, mail servers to uh, a dedicated machines to uh, let customers send uh, newsletters, marketing stuff, and so on. And we decided to to try the software. Uh, the stuff initially was very simple; uh, was just plain uh, uh, virtual setup like password style uh, lines, um, and it. It goes very well, so we decided uh, uh, to move to uh, a better setup and to try to um, to integrate on our infrastructure OpenSMTPD uh, in a better way and to use it as a primary MX as well. Uh, the main problem at that time was that there was no filter interface, so it was complicated to integrate uh, uh, anti-span software, uh, so we had to wait uh, some time uh, till uh, last year where filters were uh, uh, finally uh, integrated uh, in a very fascinating way, and uh, they are definitely production ready. Uh, on our setup, uh, we're using uh, a web panel. Uh, that's spconfig. We uh, modified the uh, that to support OpenBSD, and uh, the the biggest part 
is, is just uh, uh, let the web panel create uh, Blowfish passwords, because uh, otherwise uh, there were some path uh, hard coded uh, to fix uh, and nothing, nothing complicated. Uh, using the panel, uh, let let us uh, save data in a way that we can use uh, uh, same data from Postfix and for OpenSMTPD in a clean way, and our user can create uh, uh, by on, on their own uh, filters uh, and uh, uh, whatever they want, uh, new aliases uh, emanate their web ser their mail server. Uh, first things towards a, a real uh, high availability setup was uh, uh, absolutely load balancer. So we start moving um, with uh, PF and the RelayD integration as load balancer uh, and to uh, separate, to have more machines and, and then and share the NFS storage to uh, have mail deers. Um, the web panel uses uh, MySQL as backend, so we decided to go to with a MySQL master master replica. Uh, so all our users are uh, replicated on more machines. Uh, the MX are coupled with the master and the slave, uh, and if uh, that switch at uh, master master replica continue to uh, to replicate and so we can uh, both uh, change usernames and uh, uh, users can use their address books and calendars. Uh, we use uh, Sogo as calendar server to have this, this functionality. Uh, the simple Relay D uh, setup is just having uh, an MX uh, primary and a fallback, and um, does a TCP check at the moment that just checks if the in the port is live or not, and if it's not, a fallback to the uh, secondary. And uh, uh, for the secondary, uh, the configuration is inverted, so we can have uh, one of the two nodes down, and the whole traffic uh, is moved to the primary of the uh, or the other one. Uh, there uh, should be uh, in the future uh, some improvements there because we would like to have uh, not only check the TCP connection but also check the average queue of emails and some other things. Uh, we'll look into uh, some SNPT, SMP integration to have more information from our MX servers to detect uh, which is the server uh, to move the traffic to. Uh, one important thing it was that uh, the replica in MySQL, uh, this setup is uh, possible also with Postgres, it, it just uh, the web panel doesn't work with Postgres, but you can do whatever you want if you want. And in master master replica, uh, you can set the connection between the master and the, and the slave, and uh, it's uh, it does work uh, just with the first line of configuration file when you say uh, start replicating from this um, journal, log journal file. Uh, the second one, it's a uh, uh, new type of uh, of replica that's more stable than the previous. Uh, master master replication is uh, fair stable on OpenBSD. Uh, the the only problems we had was during uh, uh, some um, upgrade because uh, uh, MariaDB uh, certificates uh, master master replica uh, on uh, only on uh, the, s the same version of 
uh, MySQL, they, uh, they certificate for a, a mixed version, but uh, there are a lot of conditions like uh, supported, uh, <coughs> uh, officially supported operating system, uh, full moon, uh, and a lot of other things. And so uh, you have to, to stay to, maybe it's wisely to stop replica before upgrading the both servers and uh, reinstruct later. For the mail server, uh, we wanted a setup that in which we can uh, switch on from POSFIX to SMTPD on a single server with a single command. So uh, we decided to go to uh, a configuration that uh, uh, could be easier on the SMTPD part. Uh, maybe uh, for queries, most of our some queries are a bit tricky. Uh, but what we wanted is uh, that um, if uh, uh, doesn't need to switch from postfix to open SMTPD and back for whatever reasons like uh, uh, security issues or uh, like uh, uh, well there are some configurations that are better handled on the postfix part and other that are better handled on SMTPD part so there's been cases in which uh, for a specific customer we had to it was better to move to also put an SMTPD or postfix, and we decided uh, to go that, that path for that reason. Uh, first lines uh, are the certificates, uh, SSL certificate. Uh, you can use whatever. You can use your own Let's Encrypt or a, or a certificate you bought somewhere. Uh, then there are the definition of the table where your virtual user are your virtual domain, virtual hazard, and the credentials are the users that are, you use for SaaS lot authentication to relay uh, outbound email. The trickiest part is, uh, is the MySQL queries, because uh, uh, in SMTPD, uh, the user cannot be an email address, but uh, on many situations this is not true so we decided to go for a um, replace query and we decided that the underscore was not allowed or not stop on for uh, email addresses and the this is this has to be done in the both in the user info query that uh, find where it, the mail dear path is, and in the query alias that's using uh, uh, mail via alias, which is view that does uh, more or less the same things and the query info user info. So this way, uh, it's the uh, the aliases are mapped into a fake user, and then it's uh, reconstructed later at uh, MDA level. Then uh, does the entity spawn set up that uh, there's a lot of filters available. Some filters we're using, some not. Uh, at the moment, we filters on some regasp for the, um, the hello name, and uh, we check the reverse DNS. There are many uh, other filters like uh, for DNSBL, uh, if you fully trust in DNSBL, you can, you can disconnect if uh, it's, uh, it's coming from one of these uh, blacklists. Uh, also, instead of disconnecting the users, uh, there's another keyword that is junk. So if the connection matches this particular filter, the uh, email is is moved on the junk folder of the user. Uh, 
and uh, uh, it doesn't check all the subsequent filters. This is uh, uh, very useful if you trust, for example, a particular filter, or, and if you're not using pop free, because otherwise the mail will, will not be downloaded by users. Uh, filters are not only to uh, anti spam setup related, they are related also to some other things like uh, DKIM signing or uh, reporting. Uh, the protocol is very easy, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's, it's an ASCII protocol, it's not binary, so uh, you can write filter in whatever language you want and it's very easy to uh, to write and, and make it work. Uh, the Kim sign uh, filter is uh, as a peculiarity because uh, uh, with uh, uh, with the postfix uh, setup uh, we use Amavis and Amavis can sign but you had to have a key for every domain. Uh, in the DKIM sign filter you have one key for all your domains so it's it's a bit different in, in the setup from one to the other. Then there's a filter spam assassin, there's also a filter spam D if, you, if you're using the software that just uh, connects to uh, the spam assassin servers, run the rules and copy back the, the results so and the mail is rejected or accepted based on the spam assassin configuration. Then uh, filters are applied, so you can decide uh, based on whatever you want, which filters you do want. Uh, in this setup, you have an uh, egress connection, so the public interface where some filters are uh, applied, but uh, it's possible also to uh, change uh, some things, so you can, for, for example, in some condition apply some filters and in some other conditions applies different filters. Uh, all the, um, one of the cool things is that uh, for authentic submission, for example, uh, TLS authentication is required and no, no, there's no way to uh, do a submission or, a, or um, SMTP uh, relay on uh, plain text like it's possible on postfix on other software Clumd integration has been special because uh, there's more than a way uh, to do it uh, one way is to use filter Clamav uh, <coughs> But at the moment, uh, it's not production ready because it has some bugs, and uh, uh, there's some there are some races, so it's possible to uh, that emails are mixed up one to connect concatenated to another, uh, and. Um, not all viruses are detected because uh, in, in the filter uh, there's something, we still don't know what, that changes the email content when sent to Clam of uh, maybe some and, and, and lines and all not, not all viruses are de detected this way yet. Uh, so it's not, it's not something to put in, in production. Uh, Another possibility is to use a uh, mm, of called by spam uh, there, there are cool things to use uh, there, uh, but something that's not perfect. Uh, the thing that's not perfect is that if uh, a virus is detected this way, the email will be rejected uh, as junk as not as virus, so the, the message that will be uh, put to the um, upstream 
uh, mail server will be not correct. Uh, the cool things is that with this plugin that is not uh, officially integrated yet, but we think we will integrate maybe in 4.0 or 4.1 version. It's it's possible to uh, give different scores to um, different signatures from Klamav. So, for example, in Klamav there are a lot of unofficial signatures that uh, list uh, phishing contents and uh, mm, macroviruses or some other stuff, uh, your bad URLs, etc. And some of this are uh, uh, there's a high possibility to have some false positives. Uh, with this plugin, uh, we have the the possibility to add different scores to different clam of signatures. So the official scores, uh, the official uh, signatures, we are uh, f we are certain that are correct. That there are, will be no false positives, and this way we can mark as with a high score. Uh, in uh, the unofficial ones, we can change the score or uh, or use uh, other rules so uh, we can check if it's listed uh, in an official signature in Klamav and some other conditions are met then we'll mark a spam as other way it, it will continue and will be accepted. For uh, as far as you know for SPAND users there's not such feature available, but I'm not sure. So uh, this is something that you have to think about because, uh, well, uh, integration with an antivirus is something that needs to be on a mail server. Uh, this is an interesting feature that um, it doesn't fully work with Postfix, from my experience. That's SRS. It's standardized scheme. That is, when uh, you relay towards a, another certain external server with a dot forward with an analysis, uh, that's the problem that uh, SPF is not respected. So SRS rewrites the uh, the Smith sender and this way SPF is respected and the mail goes. Uh, Gmail, Facebook and others have set up such that uh, this kind of relays without SRS doesn't work. Uh, with Postfix uh, there are external filters for SRS but uh, in some cases uh, when vacation is enabled it doesn't work uh, and it triggers some loops so it's, it's not something we've found a real way to make it work in a, in a fine way. Uh, this way is definitely uh, easier and uh, and is one of the f cool things that make us move some of the infrastructure into uh, OpenS and TPD. It just has to define a uh, a crypto key uh, that's used internally and and define that when you relay you have to apply SRS and, and that's all. The, one of the trickiest part is uh, uh, the use of mail drop. Mail drop is uh, uh, the the sieve for Dovacot. It's It does the same things that seeds see if that's for Dovacot. So it, it filters email uh, base, uh, based on the mail drop uh, script language and uh, it checks for quotas um, and so on. Uh, this is the part where uh, we had to use uh, a, a custom MDA because uh, um, mail drop wants uh, the user in the setup to be an email address, but we have a user that's not an email address because uh, it doesn't work. 
So uh, the the hem this the cast on MDA just uh, replace the underscore uh, that we set up first with a SQL query and put it the uh, the head sign back. Uh, it checks for quota and uh, quota is uh, available uh, on a uh, global uh, manner. So you have to specify in 90, that's 90%. So that's warning when 90% of the quota uh, is, uh, is full. Uh, email will be sent to the user saying, well, you're quite full. Uh, the Vmail uh, the, is the user that we use for virtual delivery. So the user uh, that will exec um, the mail drop script and a um, lot of other parameters that I use uh, inside MailDrop to detect uh, uh, the sender, the, the aliases, and so on, to, to go with, uh, uh, with parsing its scripts and, and doing actions. Uh, then we have, we have, once we define the actions, we, we can define when those actions are applied, like uh, with uh, match from any, from any to one of our domains, uh, put it on their mail folder through the uh, custom MDA, or uh, deliver local if the mail is local, or if uh, mail is authorized, that you can relay uh, outbound with SRS in this case. Uh, log files uh, in SMTPD are a, a bit, uh, mm, st I think, strange uh, for uh, mm, respect to what other mail servers are. There are a lot of informations, uh, but it's, it's not as easy to uh, correlate those informations. I think this is something that uh, could be improved and uh, maybe uh, um, a wrapper filter could help this way to create a custom log file to parts to use for example in the um, Kibana or other analysis uh, tools. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the things that that's missing uh, is that when for example uh, spam B detects that there's a spam. In in the line, there is no information about the users this spam is sent to. Uh, this is because uh, the user that is is uh, is passed to spam as seen is uh, uh, unknown in this case. Uh, this is something that is discussing on uh, spam sin you can send it uh, to the server uh, a user that usually is the email address that um, you are uh, you are sending to and uh, this is used to have custom rules per user custom score per user and some other information um, as some of us adapts uh, they are different user by user on uh, on user cases, not on alias cases, and or even on domain cases in some in some way. And this cannot be done at the moment in the filter because uh, the user uh, where the um, email will be delivered uh, is unknown at that th that stage yet. Uh, we have just the uh, the information of the mail cells, so the RSCPT2, uh, but um, that information is not uh, correct for spam accessing, because, for example, uh, the RSCPT2 could be an alias, it could be um, a message from 
two minute list, so it's not the information is not fully there. There are so uh, some other um, filter like uh, military postfix, for example, uh, try hard to check uh, what the username could be by looking into uh, RCPT to headers and doing some tricks to try to detect what the correct user will be and passes to spell medicine. Uh, this could be done, uh, but uh, uh, there are some parts in the military code that could be used uh, uh, to uh, mimic the, the logic that are, that are a bit strange, like uh, it try to connect uh, with some mail to itself to detect if the user exists or not. There are some strange things that that does as n there are not that correct to do. So we're trying to find a, a better way to uh, find the correct user or something that it's uh, at least similar to the correct user and put it uh, to spam us in. And this way we will have also um, in that line some informations about the user that uh, the mail will be logged to. So at the moment uh, log files are uh, uh, there are quite all informations yeah, so you can look uh, into but uh, uh, there are not um, created in a way that's easy uh, for a log analyzer to uh, check and to store into um, into a web GUI like uh, Kibana or so on. Uh, to do that uh, we use the log stash uh, file bit uh, so we have some filters that analyze the the log files and correlates with some other informations to produce uh, those information uh, and save them into Elasticsearch. This is done with the same filter for both POSFIX servers and SMTPD servers so we can have uh, a global information uh, about uh, who is sending, uh, who's relay uh, with which server, if uh, how many people are relaying, for example, with uh, SNTPD or with Postfix. Uh, we use that also to analyze which uh, are the the most hit um, rules in spam assassin. So we can decide, for example, if uh, uh, there's a particular new spam campaign and a lot of rules are the same rule that has a, a very low score is it that we can think about uh, improving the score to block this, this campaign proactively. And it's, uh, there are, in log files, there are information to use geolocalization to, so to detect uh, even if uh, a user, for example, is trying to send emails from uh, uh, the, the, uh, from different nations in the same, uh, at the same time, which is uh, something that will probably uh, be an alarm because it, it could very very probably be an, an attack of um, impersonation of that of that user. So uh, the part that's missing at the moment is uh, the spam as simple user setup. This is one that one thing that will I think will be fixed uh, very soon. And this is uh, uh, something that prevents us to move mm, some users to uh, this setup. Because it's something that some user wants and uh, it's, 
it can be done for some domains, but not for, for all. Uh, we would like to get rid of the mail drop wrapper and use directly mail drop because it's uh, uh, the mail drop wrapper just mm, fixes uh, uh, the parameters with some uh, simple checks and then calls uh, mail drop via exactly. So it's something we would like to get rid and the only way will be probably to modify the web interface to let it save directly uh, the user. Um, so it's, it's something that will probably touch uh, more the web interface than Maildrop. So we have to decide uh, uh, which is the, the path to go if maintaining Maildrop proper and let it do, for example, uh, additional logging or something like that or, or change our web setup. One other thing is that could be done is grey listing. Uh, at the moment, there's a no official, officially committed uh, grey listing filter, uh, but there is a, um, a grey list filter that's been written by Gilles that uh, is is a bit different from the uh, typical grey listing setup because it is. Uh, uh, this filter in, is SPF aware, so uh, it knows and records if email comes from a, a, a domain that has SPF set up. So if a second connection comes from a different IP addresses, it can map the, these IP addresses in the SPF address space and let it go in without um, waiting, waiting and waiting like all classical grow listing setups. This is uh, interesting and it's something that I think could be implemented and should be committed to the official SUS tree. Uh, then definitely relay D setup based on more data. This would be, uh, would need implementing scripts uh, or uh, SNMP or something like that. Uh, to be able to decide uh, uh, in a more fine way, more gray, <coughs> granulate way, uh, which which is the the uh, server that's currently alive. This is mainly because uh, TCP connection uh, works most of the time, uh, even if, for example, uh, there's a Law, there's a high load or average, and in this case, uh, TCP connection works, so emails continue to uh, flow to the Bronx server, and it, it's be wise to uh, switch the server uh, on another, switch the mail queue on another server, so the load average could could go down and it could be analyzed uh, if if needed to. So this is more or less finished. Uh, we are going to uh, move some more domains uh, to this kind of uh, setup and to improve that to be able to uh, not uh, get in rid of postfix, definitely, but to integrate uh, postfix to, to with something that uh, mainly uh, BSD based and more uh, easier to configure and more easier to manage. Yeah? Are there plans to um, do post queue filtering uh, like with a Mavis like in Postfix uh, or you do only pre queue filtering? That's, this is pre queue filtering. Uh, if you, this is in the past, we used uh, Amavis uh, with Open SNTPD, like a proxy. So with in post queue, so it's it's possible to yeah. Please don't forget to repeat the question. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. yes.
Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Very much. Okay. Thank you.